Got more books. 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 For any of you fans, is that what we call them? Are they fans? I don't know if they're fans. I feel like some people might actually hate listen to us. Yeah. Um, but we did a call out. Well, this episode will be airing Tuesday. So when did I do the call out? Yesterday was Wednesday. The week before. Just say a week before. I did a call out on the old tweeter since it's indie April, you know, for indie authors. Thought it'd be cool if we bought an indie book. We haven't done that in a while. It's yeah. Been, probably been like a year at least. Especially since we haven't gone to any conventions yeah. or anything. We that we'd always try to pick up, you know Yeah, usually we buy indie books at conventions. Um but we have bought like a hair of the dog and things like that yeah. in the past online too. Those were I think Kindle versions. I wanted to get paperback versions. So our the order I ordered the book already. Uh it actually worked out. But anyway, so I did a call out for people to send us links to their books and I would pick one at random and uh buy it it was like eh, pretty simple I've got like two last i checked it was like 217 links people sent us like you know their books yeah and like it, the post blew up pretty good so i was like that's a lot i can't just pick one yeah like, i feel kind of shitty of you know all you know out of over 200 we we went with one book so i got five because i'm not made of money here yeah because uh I, like i said i wanted to get the paperback because that gives them more money because um a lot of those books, because I was skimming them when they were coming in, like just checking them and stuff, and a lot of the Amazon things were, they were either free on Amazon Kindle, uh, what is it, the Amazon Unlimited. Yeah. So, mm-hmm. I mean, I don't have Unlimited, but if I did, I would get their book for free, so they're not getting money then. Or it was like, at most, three bucks. Yeah. And I was like, ah, you know what, I'll pay the fucking full price for the paperback, get a physical copy, I, I you know, I want to support the indie authors. Especially if it's not some, like, huge thing. Yeah. Because, uh, you, you know, a lot of indie books are, they tend to be on, like, the smaller side, too, so it's not like... Yeah, um, so... You, like, you get in a doorstop where it's like, well, maybe I do want to yeah, get... <laughs> maybe I want to Kindle, I gotta fucking... <laughs> who's this Alan Moore, Jerusalem? Is that what this book is? He's an indie author, right? <laughs> fucking 5,000 pages. Um, so I got, the, I ordered five books, I already paid for them and everything, so they'll be here the next couple of days, so before this episode posts, I'll have the pictures up and stuff, and I'll probably do, tell the, you know, people who won tonight on Twitter, but, um, not tonight as in the airing, the tonight is of the recording, recording. which is Thursday, uh, I'm gonna go ahead and read the synopsis and, you know, the stuff on this book, but... I think, like, three of these books might be, like, short story collections. Oh, nice. Like I said, I picked these at random. I wanted to be fair, so I just did the old super fast scroll stop yeah. with the finger. That's how I, like how we do your stupid name with the map. Hey. And cool name with the yeah. map. <laughs> so I figured that would be the best way to do it, and I just happened to get some. I don't know how many of these books people submitted were short story collections. I did see some very suggestive covers, and I was like, oh, man, I didn't get any of those. <laughs> Started. Dang it, it could have got me some dong action because there were some uh, erotica titles in there, I noticed. Like I said, I skimmed some of them before, but I didn't I didn't want to be biased and be like, ooh, that book looks cool. Yeah. I'm going to go ahead and just buy that because I think that would be something I would like to... Re- no, I wanted to, you know, just pick stuff. So we're, I'm just going to go in Give order. the old luck of the draw. Exactly. Now, your job here is to, to sell me... On these books? On as many of these books as you can. I'm not going to do a good job of that, but I'll try... Um, I'm just gonna do these in the order they show up on my Amazon thing, and I I screenshotted the uh, tweets, so bear with me, folks, when I try to fucking stumble through their Twitter names and when I you know announce the handles because I don't think on the screenshot because it was a tweet like if you have a longer name it doesn't show the whole name, yeah. so I might have to fucking you know go and find them. First book is Ballad of the Dead, a modern fairy tale by D N Moore. It's D N Moore. It's a long description here. For Rory, life after high school is not what she expected. Her dreams of college and a musical career are shattered after her mother leaves unexpectedly, taking the family savings with her. Rory gets a job at a local grocery store, and life becomes mundane. That is until she meets Thomas, a young, blind man. An unfortunate accident leads them to discover that Rory's touch enables Thomas to see. Ooh, that's interesting. And from that moment on, they can't stay away from each other. Rory always knew she was different, but ever since her mother left, life is nothing like what she thought it was. Her world is turned upside down when she discovers an ancient Celtic race known as the Tuthua de Donan. I know that's I'm fucking pronouncing that wrong because I've been studying Irish. I, I can't do the throat talk. They do a lot of that, too, in the fucking Celtic language, like the Gaelic. So Tuthua de Donan, living in the woods outside town. Her connection to... By the way, the novel I'm writing deals with Celtic-Irish fairy 
it's not a fairy story, but it does have a fairy in it. So these people are stealing my ideas. You're I'm just gonna... digging that hole. Digging, digging that. that hole. You haven't even finished the outline on digging that hole. <laughs> digging, and I'm thinking, oh, you know, maybe it needs to be a Russian fairy tale. No. Um, anyway, so her connection to them is deeper than she knows, and she and Thomas find themselves caught in the middle of a brutal war. When her father is killed, she must conquer her fears and go to the underworld to get him back. But is she really willing to do whatever it takes to save him, even if it means unlocking the darkest part of herself that she has worked so hard to bury? Well, fuck, my story also deals with going to the underworld to save somebody who... So, I'm gonna have to read this book and just not write my book, apparently. <laughs> fuck. I don't know, man. Sorry, uh, oh, not, sorry, not, Dan Moore, but we might not be reading your book. I'm just reject it. No, that or not, or uh, um, I have to change some things. Or wait until after you finish yours and then read it. Yeah, that might be. Uh, you know, you know what I mean. Maybe I, I don't know. I'm just saying I don't want to write the same book. Yeah. Well, my book doesn't deal with all these other themes, um, the blindness and this. Just there's an underworld and. Uh, my story mainly takes place in the underworld, so and it's going to be very, very, very fantastical. So, um, yeah, there's only so many ideas out there. Uh, this book is 216 pages. I feel like my book's probably going to be longer just because of the subject matter that I'm going to be dealing with. And you're a wordy guy. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, this next book, No More Tales to Tell by Thomas Muller. Simple description here. Five men gather to tell stories of horror and death. But on this night, they are joined by a sixth, a mysterious man with a tale that promises to top them all. Uh, that's 194 pages. I'm thinking that's just separate short stories. Don't say that. That's what like, it sounds like. like. I was just thinking when you said that, I was like, damn, that's an awesome name for a collection of short stories. No more tales to tell? Yeah. Which uh, goes with our title episode where we'll be talking yeah. about after this. Yeah, that actually sounds pretty cool. I'll have to check that out. Next up. We, like I said, I should, oh, fuck, I should have been given the Twitter names for these. Uh, you know what? I'll just do those separate. This is Feminine Shades by Tracy Chizoba Fletcher. I think her Twitter name was like Fletcher Tracy, like it was backwards. Uh, mm. I'll find, like I said, I'll do that in a minute and check all those out. This one, ooh, another long description. Do you like stories that display and showcase the strength of a woman? Feminine Shades depicts the heroism, superpower, and survivor traits subsumed in these seven tales. Another seven tale mm. story. Well, I don't know. Was the other one six tales? I don't know. A young lady is trapped in an abusive marriage. A wife struggles to find her self-worth as a wife, mother, and career woman. A widow tries to keep hope alive and seeks a better tomorrow in the midst of hardships faced by herself and her children. An undergraduate wishes she could turn back the hands of time after a short affair leaves her life and future plans hanging in the balance. A spinster. I like spinsters. Yeah. It's been a while since we had a spinster on the show. Our story about a spinster. A spinster grapples with the changes she makes to her skin color in her quest to find love and marriage. Two young girls from different races, ethnicity, and social class have their paths cross and begin a friendship that may, that may make or mar them. A young lady rises up to her responsibilities as the first daughter in her family and gives her all feminine shades will bring, gives her all, sorry. Uh, feminine shades will bring to your consciousness and draw a vivid picture of an average woman's life in the context of love, self-worth, identity, friendship, and hope. Uh, that's 110 pages. That's another short one. Well, short story collection. That sounds uh, more literary. So that one might be about that. I like the title of this one. Yeah. Also, the cover of this one's kind of cool. It's just like oh, yeah. scribbles. Well, not scribbles, but like, you know, like a the doodly. Crude, yeah, crudy art kind of. But the, the name of this one. Who's the author? It doesn't say on the cover. I got it. Life of Maggot by Paul Jameson. Uh, does this have a description? I'm not seeing one. Um, that's how awesome it is. It is 124 pages. Life of Maggot doesn't have a description. I believe he left one on. Let me look at the picture because I'm pretty sure he left one on the old Twitter. Here we go. Life of Maggot, a boy, the magic of the forest, and the end of time. Apoca apocalyptic horror near future with folkloric influences. A telling tale inspired by medieval images. That sounds interesting. He has another picture on here with it. It's kind of cool. So uh, I'm feeling like my ho the whole fantasy like folklore thing is popping off. So maybe yeah. my novel is uh, coming at the right time if I finish it in time. Or even start it. Or just ever write it. <laughs> finish the outline. Maybe I'll just write a, a space story. Yeah. Dealing with no, wars. A, a, um, a, it would be a fantasy tale. A fantasy tale. 
Okay, Alex. That actually goes with, you know, we'll get to the episode one step at a time. One more book on the list. Another short story collection. This one uh, is a anthology. Okay. Um, so we got a couple of different authors. And from what I remember, the guy who tweeted this said that he edited it and uh, wrote a story for it and it's other authors. But yeah. So kind of basically what we wanted to do but never did. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Neon Druid, an anthology Ooh. of urban Celtic fantasy. Another ca- yeah. Celtic apparently is popping off, so now I'm starting to think maybe I shouldn't write this story that I'm the novel because everybody's writing Celtic stories. I didn't know you might get lost in the shuffle. Yeah, I mean my story isn't going to be heavily Celtic. It's just uh, that's the setting. Edited by E. I'm going to fuck up your name. Sorry, sir, but uh, I E. Neverday. Neverday. I'm going to say that's a silent K. Like I E. Neverday. I think that's a pen name. Pro, I, okay. So that's that's a silent K. It's not Never Day. <laughs> I.E. Never Day. Also, I apologize to I.E. Never Day if you're not actually a guy and I just called you one. I just... I, or if I, it's not actually I.E. Never Day. Or, yeah, or if you, well, I, I don't know. I don't know anything anymore. Uh, let me read this description. I feel bad for anybody who's excited about the fact that we bought their books and we're going to read them at some point in time and then they listen to this and they're like, oh, they just fucking sound so yeah. stupid. <laughs> I did. This was a professional podcast. More professional than some. Not many. Not many, but some. <laughs> some. I've heard worse. That's my, that's, a, that's my goal in life. Is I heard worse. I've read worse. I've seen worse. You just need to be better than the last worst person. Uh, here's how I think about life. Either be the... If you can't be the best, be the worst, actually. <laughs> because if you're the worst, then people will remember you. Yeah. Yeah, it was like Ed Wood made those shitty movies or something. Like, you could be the worst. Well, I mean, just take that into our own personal lives. Do you do you, do you remember any of the good people you worked with? No, but no. you remember the worst. <laughs> remember the worst ones. Um. Anyway, so Neon Druid. Cross over into a world where the mischievous gods, goddesses, monsters, and heroes of Celtic mythology live among us. Intermingle this kind of uh, sounds like uh, Neil Gaiman's American Gods or that uh, that that bright movie kind of a little bit yeah with the ogres um anyway intermingling with unsuspecting mortals and stirring up mayhem in cities and towns on both sides of the Atlantic from Limerick and Edinburgh to Montreal and Boston a collection of seventeen short stories Neon Druid mixes urban fantasy and Celtic mythology creating a universe where lecherous leprechauns and debaucherous druids inhabit the local pubs and where shape shifting water spirits from Scotland and sword wielding warriors from Ireland lurk in the alleyways. I really like the alliteration there. Yeah. The debaucherous druids yeah. le- lecherous leprechauns. I like that. Stealing some of your name f- possible future names, yeah. you answer. The stories inside this anthology are independent narratives set within the urban centers and environs of this shared Celtic otherworld. Some are tales of supernatural horror, others are street-level fantasy adventures, and still others are farcical, whiskey-drenched fairy tales. Fans of Neil Gaiman, the American Gods, and Maria Deshvana Headley, the mere wife, who enjoy seeing ancient stories and characters reimagined for modern times, will feel right at home within the pages of Neon Druid. But rest assured, even if you're unfamiliar with the incredible authors mentioned above, there's still a good chance that you, or a friend, or co-worker, or loved one, or mortal enemy, Jeez, will, be, bread up. <laughs> will be a good fit for Neon Druid. I will say a couple of these descriptions do run a bit long. I had to hit the read more button. Yeah. But this is an anthology, and... Uh, I say, does, does that one say how many pages it is? 172 pages. That's not bad, though, with 17 stories. Since Jerusalem is fucking big, I've been... Uh, well, as you know, I started that new PBS Hemingway collection that came yeah. out. Like some A lot of those stories I haven't read yet. So I've been reading that during the day, and I'll read Jerusalem. I haven't, but I will read Jerusalem <laughs> at night. So I think I'm going to... Uh, when I get this, I'm going to... Before I give these to you, I'm going to go ahead and read this Neon Druid, because that sounds uh, interesting. I'm going to read a bunch of these. They're actually all mostly quick reads. Um, yeah. Maybe we can do like a, like a round robin kind of thing. Like, you read one while I read the other one, and then yeah. like, we switch back up, you know? Yeah, that'd be cool. Because um, a couple of those, like like the, the Neon... The neon gods, is that what it was? Or neon... Neon druids. Druids. That seemed interesting. The no more tells to tell. Seemed like that could be uh, yeah. pretty interesting, too. That, that's almost, I almost have, like, the uh, man in the black coat or whatever, like that Stephen King, like, the devil mm. comes and, you know... Yeah, the shows, man in the black suit. Yeah, like, like that kind of feel to it. So, for Neon Druid, that was IE Neverday, at Neverday on Twitter. He edited the book and contributed to it. So, 
Uh, and like I said, that's a, that's a bunch of authors. Paul Jameson uh, at Mod Quokka, M O D Q U O K K A. Which one did? That's Life of Maggot. Uh, also, I apologize if I am reading your at handle and it doesn't fit on the thing, and I don't know it doesn't fit on the thing. I assume it's fitting on the thing, but you never, you know. Because Twitter, like, they cut off shit sometimes. Like, we can't be drunk in pen writing. We had to be drunk pen writing yeah. because couldn't fit the E-N. Yeah. It, was, it was too long. The Feminine Shades, that is Fletcher Tracy at Zoba Fletcher, Z-O-B-A Fletcher on uh, Twitter. No More Tales to Tell is Thomas Moeller at Thomas M2007389. Now there's dots, so yeah. just look up Thomas Moeller because these are screenshots I took. I'm not going through that fucking yeah. giant list and f- finding, you know, needle in the haystack. Uh, Ballad of the Dead was DN Moore at the real DN Moore. She's the real one, not the fake. Don't go to the fake, the fake one. one. Do not go, go to the to fucking fake, fake one. one. Shame on you, DN Moore. You did not put a synopsis on our Twitter feed, on the thread. A lot of people put synopsis. But Dan Moore did not. She just assumed that her very cool-looking cover. I don't think I showed you the cover. No. It's pretty cool. Uh, Would sell us. Yeah. Well, it didn't. We just picked you to read. (laughs) No. Lucky. Uh, That actually does sound pretty cool. Like I said, it sounds like my novel kind of, so I might either be a fan or loathe you, Dan Moore. We'll find out in the future after I read your book. Also, one quick thing, even though we're fucking 18 minutes into this cold open. Jesus. Uh, One thing I wanted to touch on, Spencer... Before we go into the episode, is uh, just a quick publishing thing for indie authors. I saw today, I didn't know this was a thing, on uh, Amazon, they will remove your, uh, reviews you got if they find out that those are people you know. Oh, yeah? Uh, they do that by, like, if your email... Well, they get everybody's information. So. Well, if your Amazon email is the one you use for Facebook, and I'm assuming this would probably apply to Twitter, Instagram, stuff, but... Facebook was the one this this particular author had. It will show that you're connected to the emails of the people, like if you're Facebook friends with them, of the people who reviewed your books. If you had your family review your yeah. book and you use your Facebook email on your Amazon, yeah. it'll be like, oh, that's just their buddies giving them good reviews and they take it off. I did not know. So do not use your social media emails on Amazon, your author page. You do a separate one. Make up one. And and that's kind of messed up too because like a lot of people, like especially like the indie creators, they're friends with their friends with their yeah. fans on Facebook. Like, yeah, a lot of them. So would that kick that? Like you know what I yeah, mean? Yeah, it's just if it's if they think it's uh, somebody you know, it uh, and it doesn't like question it or anything. They just take the algorithm or whatever takes it off. So because she said she only had like three reviews and they took two of them off because and she said that I was uh, I think it was friends they read the book and actually you know it was just their real feelings on yeah. the book it was a real review they gave they just happened to you know she knew them and they took it off so i did not know that was a thing no man, that's, that's a little messed up i don't know how yeah. I, I don't think i like that now i don't know why goodreads doesn't do that because there's a lot of authors who have 35 star reviews and it's all people who didn't even read the book they're just yeah. friends of them or something so i i mean i get why it would do that because, you know, what if you just created a bunch of fake Facebook profiles yeah. and spammed it and said you had to go, you could do that. So simple solution, have a, your own author email that isn't an email used for any other social media or anything like that. Just use it for your Amazon. Uh, and I would say Goodreads too, probably, just in case. I don't know if they do that or not. Yeah, a little bit of tip, tip for you. Just a tip. Pro tip. Welcome to the DPW podcast. Finally. Uh, yeah, that was like a 20 minute intro and I'll, I'll shave it down a little bit, but it's still going to be pretty long. Apologies, but sorry, not sorry. Got some indie author shine, so it is what it is. You could always skip it if you don't want to do that, and, you know. So I guess we could probably just put that at the end, huh? We, we can't edit things, huh? Yeah, but I don't. I mean, you have to. Yeah, you I don't know why it. you say we like you are going to be editing. It's going to be me and I don't. It's just a copy paste job, but I don't, you know, cut paste 
shit situation. I just don't want to do it. Um, I am your host, Caleb James. With me today is Spencer, the Thai Taint Toucher Church. Ooh. I said you weren't going to be the tickler. I think I've done Taint Tickler. I feel like I've done Taint Toucher. I yeah. think I've done something along the well, lines I of feel, Toucher and Tickler. I feel like any kind of Taint Touching is going to be ticklish. Yeah, maybe. Very... What if it's, well, what if it's a rough touch, like a hard press? I still think you make the person go, huh. Hmm. I can give you another name on the spot. Give me a give me a place. Uh, I mean, give no, me a place. Just give me a place. Go on. Go on. No, you know. I, no, no, I'm not satisfied with Thai Tate <laughs> Toucher. Give me another name. Go ahead. Just name the fucking city, state, country. <laughs> uh, Quebec. Fuck you. You got to use, <laughs> you gotta use a Q? Oh, you fucking <laughs> son of a bitch. That's uh, really challenging. But now, now I don't know what to do. Quebec. 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 Out of everything. Out of everything. Because uh, I could use a C, but I don't want to cheat. I want to do it the right way and use a Q word. I don't know that many Q words. Spencer, the Quebec quail kill, killer church. You're, you're, yeah, I can't. Qu- quail Quaker. The, the Quebec Quaker church. You're just yeah. a Quebec Quaker. You're a Quaker, you know. Oh, yeah. Yeah, talk about. I've been talking about Quakers a lot lately. I don't know why. Something about do. I had a discussion about Pennsylvania dumb liquor laws and mm. the Quakers and. Uh, oh, I know why. It's because I got my fucking marriage license on Tuesday where we applied for it or whatever. And they uh, there's something called in this state called uh, I forget like a self service wedding or I don't. know. It's like traditional wedding and self something. And uh, like, what the fuck is a self? You looked it up. It's, it's something to do with Quaker laws. You could just have a guy like you. You could just be like, we're getting married, Spencer. Okay. And that's it. Yeah. And so I didn't know you could do that. Neither here. You fucking Quebec. Yeah, you goddamn monster. That, 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 uh, show you to not just ask me to randomly come up with something again. Yeah. Yeah. I'm surprised you didn't throw a Z in there, but you don't know any Zs. That's, no. that's the only reason. I'm so, going to, uh, next time it's going to be a fake place. A fake place? Yeah. Like Wakanda? So yeah, something like, yeah, something like that. Asgard. Yeah, something. The Asgard mm. ass assault. You were the ass assault. I'm starting to run out of fucking A's verbs and stuff. Uh, yeah, I don't know. Yeah, no more A's. <laughs> um. Anyway, what's this episode about? Titles. I bring this up because it'll be a short episode, since especially since we have fucking hour twenty three minutes, and the time is ticking away. <sighs> And we want to record multiple episodes because I'm gonna be going on a honeymoon, so I won't, you know, be here to record. But titles, how to come up with good titles, probably not what we're gonna talk about, but we will talk about titles. And I bring this up because you came over Tuesday for a writing session. You came over, you yeah. came hard, you came fast. Actually, that was not that good of a white writing session. No. I did mostly editing on the website, and you wrote some words for your other story that you don't want to write anymore. It seemed <laughs> like anyway, you did finish that short story you're working on. And you put it on the website for me to review. Yes. Now, here's where the best title I ever heard, also the worst. Title. Okay, folks, I, I would love for you to message us or, you know, Twitter or whatever to tell us what you think of this title. He did this as a placeholder yeah. because he didn't have a, a title, title idea. It's this, but I wanted to get it to you so you could review yeah, it and stuff. The story takes place, a short story it takes place it's on a planet somewhere. There's a war in space. So he put Space War Story. That is the title, Space War Story. And we laugh for like hours about how stupid that is because it just seemed ridiculous. Like it started off like, oh, that's funny. It, then it just with, kept with, thinking with, about with, it. It started out as mocking. Mock, yeah, me making fun of, really, dude, Space War Story, that's mm-hmm. what you come up with. But then it just kept progressing until, because it's like a folder name, Space War Story. Saying, yeah. And, yeah. But then we started to realize the brilliance of the title. Yeah. We started to say things like, Greatest title ever made. Yeah. Well, I don't know about Maybe that. Maybe we, we thought it might be one of those like idiot savant kind of people. Yeah, yeah. So we were thinking, this, now follow my uh, train of thought here, folks. Space War Story. A good title, in my opinion, now there's a lot of cool titles, but a good title can, uh, it doesn't have to be just some fancy, you know, terminology you're using or something from the story. It could just be something that tells you exactly what the story's about. Mm-hmm. Think of American Horror Story, a TV yeah. show. Uh, a Tale of Two Cities by Charles Dickens. That's a tale of two cities. There yeah. you go. You kind of know. What do you think of when you think of Space War Story? 100% you're thinking of a space <laughs> war, and it's a story. Yeah. Uh, Texas Chainsaw Massacre. A massacre. A chainsaw a massacre, massacre in, in Texas. Texas. And like we were saying when you were over, you either when you read that title, you either want to read it or you don't. Yeah. You're like... I'm about Space War Story, (laughs) or I'm not about Space War Story. I'm in the mood to read Space War Story, yes or no. That's simple. I like that. Other than, like, 
Battlefield Earth Galactica Voyage 9. Yeah, like some long rambling, it might sound cool, but you know, doesn't it doesn't give you the reader a real idea of what it, the story might be. Space War Story, you know exactly what you get. So I implore you, Spencer, to allow me to make it Space War Story, and that is the title. And we'll I, see what happens. Yeah, I mean, I don't have a problem with that. I mean... Interesting title. So Crea- I, that I creative? Feel, no. Not very creative. I just feel like if people like it, it's going to set a bad precedent for me <laughs> <laughs> for titles going forward. Spencer, your Space War story got 3,000 views the first day. <laughs> well, guess I'm writing no more things like that. Detective story. Yeah. <laughs> Underwater shark fighting story. Yeah. Like, Wait, what was that uh, naked bear man? What was that, that comic? Uh, sh- shirtless, shirtless bear, bear fighter. fighter. You know what the fuck? The, you know shirtless what bear fighter. I just feel like where you have oh, six gun gorilla. Six gun gorilla. It's a gorilla that holds a six gun shoot stuff. I just feel like a title that direct can work wonders yeah. on, you know, bringing in the audience. I think it's a good idea. It could be stupid, mm-hmm. obviously, as such a space war story, but it can also be brilliant, such a space war story, <laughs> because you know, because we, we also, also as, as, as you brought up the other night too, it's very similar to Star Wars. Star Wars <laughs> is the exact same premise. It's just not the premise of your story, but the premise of the, like the title is just Star Wars. It's wars or, dealing in the stars star somewhere. Like you know what you're getting. Star Wars doesn't have to be. Something so you don't have to think too much about your titles. I feel. I mean, you can. Uh, like I way I go about my titles is usually like the old movie trope of. Uh, oh, they said they said yeah, they yeah. said the name. They said the name. He said Forrest Gump. He said Pulp Fiction. Like you know whatever it is. If they say it in the movie, like you get you know it's stupid, but you get kind of excited. You're like they said it. I get it now. So I do that with my stories. I like because to throw I, in the title. Well, because I don't know. Yeah, because I don't know about you, but I always kind of like. Like when you're reading it and you get to like, and that's why they named the book that. Like, yeah, you know what I yeah, mean? I like that too. I like, just I couldn't, I didn't have anything like that really in the story. Did you ever do that? You ever write well, a you, story that doesn't have you brought something up, like that? Well, you brought up in the intro Stephen King's uh, "The Man in the Black Suit." Yeah, that's a similar thing because until he meet the kid meets the man in the black suit, it's just like, well, what's the man in the black suit? Similar, but yeah, I have many times where I don't actually have an idea for the name, and I write the whole story, and I'll actually go back and find, like, did I have like a cool theme? What's the theme of this story? Okay, we're we're talking about uh, fucking child murder. Okay, well, what can I take from that? And then I'll find like just a phrase or something, a couple you know words that maybe sound cool or something that I used or uh, something a character said, and you know that could be. Was something you could like easily put like add into the book, like yeah, or something you could throw into the book. You know, something you want something to fit. Now you don't want to shoehorn it in. No, no, because like, I've saying... seen that happen too. Where I'm reading something and the fucking title of the book is like you know something stupid no. or just something out out of the like uh, Haruki Murakami's what is it uh, uh, Hard Boiled Wonderland and the End of the Earth or something along those lines. I don't think he actually says that in the book. No. But if he did, it'd probably be a fucking ridiculous scenario where he did it, where the character's like, well, I guess that's why we're living in a hard-boiled wonderland in the end of the... Like, it'd be fucking dumb. Yeah. Like, that's very ham-fisted, so don't do that. What other what, what other books can you think of that are great, that have really stupid titles, if you actually break them down? Now, there's also simplistic ones, like, you know, The Adventures of Tom Sawyer, The Adventures of Huckleberry Finn. Jaws. Jaws. That's cool, because you if you didn't see the cover and notes about a shark, yeah. like, what could Jaws be? Could be anything. Could be a lecherous woman who bites because she's a a she's a mad zombie prostitute. No, doesn't have to be a lady. Could be a dude. Could be uh, anything. I don't. I'm just using the old trope of a lady prostitute because that's what I know from the '80s. Because I'm born in the '80s and watched a lot of eight movies and prostitutes were evil in the '80s. A little bit in the '90s, but they kind of got nicer, like Pretty Woman and yeah, you know. I feel like the prostitutes softened as the ages go, but prostitutes in the eighties were rough, dude. Mm. Chopping everybody up and stuff. Moida. Uh, another good topic, Dave. Fucking uh, one of our favorite things ever. Uh, Dragon Ball. Dragon Ball. Ball. They say that thing. <laughs> you know, you know. They say that almost. Oh, well, not so much anymore, but like in them early episodes, all the time, all the time. Though when it became Dragon Ball Z. They never threw that Z and They were the Z fighters. Yeah. Well, they just threw the Did Z. They, who they, was the Z fighter? Like, why were they the Z fighters? Well, they just threw the Z in for the anime. 
Yeah, in, well, it, it wasn't in the store. In, the, in manga, the manga, the yeah. whole thing's still just Dragon Ball. Mm. Another good idea is if you can get away with it, a one word title for your story. Yeah. Like you said, Jaws. Uh, there's a series over there, it's a manga series, Vagabond. A lot of Japanese uh, mangas I find have like one word uh, titles. It. It. That Now, that's the shortest of all titles, I think, unless, unless there's like a book called O or something. Two letters, it. And what do you think of when you think of it? You don't know. It could be anything. It's it. Yeah, that's a classic one. You know, Stephen King does that a lot, actually. Like, Well, his short stories have some ridiculous long names sometimes. Yeah. Like the Shawshank Redemption and the, uh, was it Rita Hayward? Something with Rita Hayward. Mm. But, you know, the sh- you know, could have been Shawshank Redemption. You know, the, the Rita Hayward. But, like, his novels are always, you know, Rage, Carrie, Pet Cemetery is a good one. Yeah. Like, what do you think of when you think of a Pet Cemetery? That shouldn't necessarily mean horror and evil, but it just like you think of bad things when you think of a pet cemetery. The dead zone. The dead the zone. zone. Fuck it. I don't know what that's about, but I'm reading it. I am reading the dead zone. Midnight Meat Train. What yeah. is that, Clive Barker? That's a fucking cool title book. And that's exactly what the book is. It's yeah. a midnight, it's a subway, and there's a butcher on it just chopping people. That's what it is. It's a meat train. A badass title. Didn't Stephen King have, like, The Mangler or something? Yeah, that, that was one of the short stories. Yeah, I think it was a stupid one. It was, like, about a... Um, it was, like, a cleaning press or something. Yeah, the Mangler's Or a people. printing press or some some kind of press. It was, like, some with clothes. Yeah. Like a steamer. I don't know. Anyway, The Mangler, that was a cool name. Uh, Joe Hill's Horns. Horns. I don't know how I feel about horns. Makes it, me think of the devil. It will. Is that what it's supposed to? Yeah. Well, then that worked. It worked 100%. Uh, fuck, I can't think of uh Clyde Barker has some good ones. Hellraiser. Yeah. That's a good one. Anyway, we're, we're getting off topic. Not off topic, but we're getting sidetracked on the topic. So what about bad titles? Uh I would just tell the the, the listeners to go onto the website and go the and look, <laughs> yeah, yeah, no. uh, go to Spencer Church and look through uh mm. through my catalog. You will find them any there. Well, Many examples. I think uh, when you were over, I Mindy was uh, inebriated or something, and I handed her phone. She asked me to get her phone. I said, hey, Bartleby the Scrivener is calling. That's the fucking Dickens book, I, I believe. Yeah. I think that's Dickens. Uh, that seems like a terrible name to me. That seems like something yeah. I just wouldn't want to read. The Pickwick Papers is also a title I'm never interested because I just think the name yeah. is dumb. I don't know why. I mean, you know, British ass loves that, but I, I'm, not, I'm not, I don't know. H.P. Lovecraft has some real good titles and some real fucking stinkers. Yeah. Like, he has... Uh, whenever he throws in some fucking, you know, like, neo tarp or whatever, well, you're like, what? And uh, and didn't he also have, like, a uh, habit of kind of going long on his titles? Was he... Uh, I don't know, because you have, like, Call of Cthulhu, which is a cool title, The Mountains of Madness. Like, he did, The Dunwich Horror is a great one. Yeah. Uh, the Shadows Over Innsmouth. Like, those are all good titles. But he, yeah, he did have a he did uh, have a few. Uh, but it, there's a thing. I mean, you have enough short stories. You're gonna have some stinky titles. Yeah, probably some stinky short stories too. Yeah, but anyway, just to reiterate, I think the uh, the direct approach if, usually if, works. If I remember correct, some of those Conan titles were pretty fucking ridiculous. Well, yeah, weren't the greatest. Yeah, James Bond's good for titles. Yeah, yeah. James, you know, like uh, Dame to Kill for. That's not a James Bond title, but that would be a James Bond, like a Dame to Kill for yeah. or something like that. Also, uh, Chandler has some good titles too. Like, uh, the fuck was the book we read? The Big, Big Sleep. Sleep. That's a cool title. And then you can always just do a name, like a character's name, Frankenstein. Yeah. Dracula. Then you got Edgar Allan Poe. He okay. Poe's probably a better example than H.P. Lovecraft with like shit titles or good titles. Because, you know, he had The Mask of the Red Death. Cool title. Yeah. The Raven. Cool title. But he also had, like, the, what is it? The Cask of Ambatil... I, I never could fucking pronounce it. Because like, he would do a lot of, like, French or German or something. So he has a lot of stories that have, like, German titles. Like, I'm not fucking reading that. Yeah. I'm not German. I don't want to read The Murder of Gordon Schienheimann. I'm like, who? The Murder in the Rue Morgue, though. That's a good one because that's exactly what the story's about. A Murder in the Rue Morgue. But I think it was a girl that was the culprit. I haven't read that one yet, but I read the, uh, I think it was Clive Barker did a version of it, and it was, uh, it dealt with uh, a murder by a big gorilla man. Not a man, just a gorilla. Kafka had some interesting titles. I think most writers 
that are that become make famous have you know some pretty good titles. Yeah, what well, you think that's one of the that's a tool set that yeah. you need to to get to that level. Mm. Though I do like going through Haruki Murakami's work, I do find and usually they're his lesser known books have like really long kind of title. Like I said, the hard boiled wonderland something at the end of like, that was a long one. And what was the one I fucking told you I was going to read on the plane? Uh, uh, fuck. I don't even remember. It was like, we could see it if it wasn't for our awesome curtain. Yeah. I don't want to get up. Yeah. But it it was, it's like a fucking very long title. Uh, Do you think any of that has to do with the translation factor? That could be, I'm, I'm sure the title's probably shorter in Japanese or read shorter than just the, you know, the characters, but, uh, I don't know, is there anything to add to this? I mean, probably, but... Now let's talk about blurbs! No, we don't need to talk about blurbs. How do you write a blurb? That's, that's, that's Kind of goes along with the title. I swear we talked about blurbs not too long ago. I don't think we did a good job of it, No, though. no, probably not, no. I suck at blurbs still. We talked about how bad we were at writing blurbs. Yeah. I don't know if we talked about, uh, how but, to write a good blurb. So, Caleb and Spencer's top five tips for writing a good title. Have it be cool. Have it be cool. <laughs> Have it make the reader want to read it. That that's the main thing. Like a point I have about bad titles is like people will come up with a fucking title that they think is like clever or something, and it might be like a fucking you know, like old Greek or Latin or something. Yeah. It's like your your average reader, unless you're like you know writing literary fiction, I don't see that they would really want to uh, read that. Probably it's not going to call out to them. Like what was that? Uh, when I was fucking trolling literary tropes or something, I wrote like a fucking real pretentious piece, and I uh, it had it was about a guy like in a fucking airport watching people or something. I was like, you know, like, but it was like, you know, I think he had problems with his bomb or something fucking stupid. I made the title like I did like what you did like just a basic placeholder title for the site because I was thinking about submitting it to like some literary magazine. I just never got around to it, but I was gonna name it something real pretentious too because it dealt with the guy at airports. I was like, well, you know, airplanes flying, uh, and it was like something of like the fall of Icarus or like something fucking real pretentious. Yeah. I was like, oh yeah, that would fucking get because you know they see that they're like, oh yeah, this is this is high brow, the fall of Icarus, yeah. the highest of brow. It has nothing to do with Icarus or a man flying. It has to do with the guy in an airport bitching about his life. Perfect. So, uh, I mean, if you want to troll literary magazines, you can go ahead and do that. That might work, but anyway, that's it. Thanks for listening. Bye. What you do at the fucking at the end of the, the, the fucking Twitter? And it's, I don't want to do it. I just don't want to do it anymore. You do it. You know? No. You can, you can say you know the name of the website. Sometimes. If you want to check out our fiction and our awesome titles, where can they go, Spencer? Uh, the website is drunkenpenwriting.com. Could have just said, you didn't have to say the website. You could have just said, oh, the, man, the, you gotta it, smooth it out, The man. internet connection. <laughs> HTTP backslash, backslash, or is it forward slash? I might already <laughs> fucked it up. Um, yeah, so the drunkenpenwriting.com, Twitter at drunkpenwriting, Instagram, and Facebook at drunkenpenwriting. We've been doing this so long, I don't even remember why I came up with it. You know what? Because thinking about titles... I came up with drunken pen writing very stupidly. I don't remember. I think I was holding a pen and I was drunk yeah. and I was writing. Yeah. Honestly, I think that's how I came up with it. I was sitting there and I was like, yeah. Hey. And I think also that nobody else had it. So, Well, that was a big one. <laughs> nobody else had it. Nobody else had the, uh, I looked all over the internet. I didn't see drunken pen writing. I saw drunk pen writing, but it was like defunct blogs from like, you know, Tumblr blogs or yeah. something. It was just like pictures of fucking beer or something. That's that's how we're living. So anyway, folks, thanks for listening, and uh, congratulations to the indie authors that we read. We're gonna read your books, and yeah, uh, I'm looking forward to checking some of them out. Maybe review them, just some of them, not all of them. Mm. Goodbye, folks. <laughs> <laughs>